This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Giving can be done through Patreon, PayPal, or Cash App. All links are in the description. As stated over the years, if you do give, let it be in accordance with the scriptures. Love you. Let's get it. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day. In the Lord Jesus Christ, as always, today is Sunday, August 20th, 2023. Sunday, August 20th, 2023. The time is currently 2.49 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and give you a disclaimer because you already see the title of the video. This is for grown folks. This is not for those who are immature. This is for grown folks. This is for those who are of meat, eating meat. This is not for the immature. This is for grown folks. This is not... For the children, for those who are on milk, you've been warned. Most likely, your mama is a hoe, your daddy is a hoe, your grandma is a hoe, your grandpa is a hoe, your aunties are hoes, your uncles are hoes, your nieces are hoes, your nephews are hoes, and your children are probably hoes. I'm going to give you a second to, to gather yourself. This is one of those sermons. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't say what I say. This is one of those sermons. Listen more so to what I'm saying. Instead of thinking you have a free license to say something. Because I'm not speaking in ignorance. I'm not speaking from a perspective of not understanding. I'm not speaking from the perspective of I'm um, pronouncing a cuss word or a curse word upon somebody. Yet if I am, the curse word I would be pronouncing would be righteous. I've shown you, I've done sermons showing you that, I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to show you later, not directly, but indirectly. I want you to do your own research. Um, what we call, what we say, B, yes, you know, rhymes with itch. It's in the Bible. It's not the way that we say it, but the concept, just like Bible isn't in the Bible. Rapture is not in the Bible. There are many things that are not in the Bible Specifically, computer is not in the Bible. Artificial intelligence is not in the Bible. Internet is not in the Bible, yet it is in the Bible. So that word, B, that rhymes with itch, isn't directly in the Bible in the sense that you're not going to open the Bible and see that word. Yet you will still see the concept and the content content and context of that word in the scriptures. But the question was asked stuff is why? Because God was trying to make a point. But God was, was not trying, but he made a point. But he was more so trying, striving in the sense of the people. I've shown you with sermons that what we call Nigger, nigger is in the Bible. Now, that's directly in the Bible. People say, Niger, Niger, Niger. No, when you go listen to it, it says nigger. And the slang for that, how we say it is what? Nigger. Now, the way I explain um, it in the context, because it can be used different ways. When I say nigger, these niggas, I'm speaking about the basis of the basis Negroes, because people understand 
that language, especially when you're speaking amongst your own people. We know that a lot of times we use it or we did use it as a term of endearment. People say, how can you use that term as an endearment? Because the term was never really, never really, <laughs> never really from the beginning used the way it's used today as a byword. That, that came with the curses. That came with the curses. Nigga was originally not used the way that is used today in the sense of y'all know how it's used not in a good not in a good uh good way am i cussing did i just cuss up a storm storm did i just curse up a storm maybe i did maybe i didn't let's look at it but the question we must ask ourselves is did god call your mama a hoe yes God called your mom. God said your mama's a hoe. God said your whole family is a hoe. God said you a hoe ass nigga. Oh my God. Like I said, this is for grown folks. Now let me explain it before I go a little bit further because I know somebody is just in shock. Once we get past the shock value, then we can get to the good stuff. So I said this is for grown folks. I just said hoe ass nigga. Somebody would say, man, you just, you just cuss and you fuck your pastor. A hoe is what? We're going to discuss it. Ass is what? Is a beast. Nigga, in the concept we're speaking about, the basis of the Negroes. Hoe, ass, nigga. Like I said, don't say what I say. Listen to what I'm saying. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, so we have the word cuss. It says an annoying or stubborn person or animal. Have you, did you know that? Have you ever heard that? Hmm. Like a dumb ass, the dumb ass, the beast in the Bible, the, the dumb ass spake, forbidding the prophet. God was using the dumb ass to speak to the prophet because the prophet was being worse than the dumb ass, the donkey. <laughs> like we don't, we, oh my God. Oh. <sighs> Another is also another term for curse. Okay. So cussing is also cursing. Did I just, have I been cursing for the last six minutes and was seven minutes? Maybe, maybe not. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't say what I say. Cause most people don't understand what I'm saying yet. And even when they do understand it, I'm still not telling you to go out and say what I say. I'm saying what I say because I have to, because I'm about to prove a point to you. Now we got, we got this, right? Let's go over here. It says the term cuss is a colloquial or informal way of referring to profanity, swearing, or using offensive and vulgar language. So, Hey, according to what it's saying, I use profanity. I'm being profane. I'm swearing. I'm being offensive and I'm being vulgar. Yet, if I say what I say, what I just said, but that person that's sleeping with so and so, y'all don't y'all don't see that as offensive or vulgar. When those two people lay down to and they had a child, and now that supposed to be father isn't a father. He doesn't want to take care of that child and that child grows up and he ends up bringing forth that hatred toward your children or your daughter. He runs to your daughter and treats your daughter some type of way, which is not righteous. Oh, now it's a problem, but it wasn't a problem before. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? We be wanting to address one thing because we just, we, we just want to address that part. Oh, he said this. He's cussing. He's cursing. But then when they were being using profanity, in the club or they were swearing in the club or they were using offensive or vulgar language in the club or at that restaurant when he got that woman and they buried that child and he didn't take care of that child and that child grew up with hatred in them and then that child we're gonna say that man that boy became a man but he really wasn't a man he's just a man in the body but he's still a boy he got your daughter he ran through your daughter he turned your daughter out your sweet daughter your loving daughter now look at her. She's out here walking around like a hoe. And you're trying to figure out what's going on. Why is she acting like this? Because maybe you didn't do your job when you were supposed to stand up for righteousness. 
But no, that's not vulgar. That's not offensive. You don't see that offensive until it affects you. And yet you want to try to come tell me what I'm saying right now is wrong. If I tell you how deep you want to go, we got layers and layers and layers and layers of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and I'll break it down to you. It's like I just did. You see the hypocrisy of people? They will come at me for saying what I just said. H O H A N. We're going to start putting acronyms, acronyms on it. H A N. And yet they won't come for those who are doing what we just said and worse. Huh? Very interesting. Very, very interesting. When someone cusses, they are using words or expressions that are considered socially inappropriate. Socially inappropriate to who? They put good for evil, evil for good. I'm finna break it down to you. Offensive and disrespectful. The word of God is disrespectful. They see the word of God as cussing. They see the word of God is, is pronouncing a curse. But they're already cursed. You see, it doesn't matter if we say the B word um, or, or the word whatever. We can just preach the word and tell the people to repent and believe the gospel. And they say, oh, you're cursing to us. Me in the position that I am because I have the knowledge of wisdom understanding with words. I know I'm, you know how I am with words. I know how to use the words and use it in a way to be fishers of men and get people's attention. It's like I got your attention from the title of the video, didn't I? With what? With words. It was bait. It was bait. <laughs> the use of such language can vary widely depending on cultures. Like if we say nigga, we don't see nigga as offensive unless it's used in an offensive way. In what we call the black community. Uh, a black culture, social or, excuse me, and individual norms. And what is considered a cuss word can differ across different communities and languages. Now, certain things I'm not going to say. I may think it in my mind, but guess what? I said it in my mind, I've said it anyway. <laughs> if you, if, if I say in my mind, my spirit, that mother, I don't have to finish it. You know what I said, right? If I said in my spirit, I've still said it. You see, we put this big show on because you think because you ain't said it with your mouth that you still ain't said it in your heart. When God said, that, if you look upon a woman in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit to lust, you have committed adultery, fornication. Because you've already done it inwardly. Let's just be real about it. I have to break it down this way so we can be real. But y'all don't want nobody real. You want to go on Netflix and watch the gangster movies. You want to watch the gangster shows. You want to watch this and you want to watch that. And you say, oh, they being real. But when a pastor comes to you and break it down, he likes it to be real. Oh, no, you're not supposed to. So you, so you rather learn it from a, from a movie and learn it from a pastor. Oh, I, I see. I see. You rather they be real in the movies than the very people that's supposed to be real. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. Like I said, this for grown folks. I ain't got to say the word to say the word. You know what I'm saying. Jump over here. Now, let's look, let's look at this word curse. It says the meaning of curse word is a profane or obscene oath or word. Hence, curse word okay okay we're getting somewhere i think i think we're getting somewhere right curse what remember walk in the spirit you want to walk in the flesh and you can walk in the flesh you, you won't understand this like i told you don't say what i say listen to what i'm saying did you understand what i just said because only the spirit gonna give you that revelation right there don't say what I say. Listen to what I'm saying. What I just say. Curse word. What is a curse? What is a word? The Bible says a word is seed. So curse seed. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Keep that in mind. Again. The meaning of curse word is a profane or obscene oath or word. 
Also, you know, a swear word. We're going to look at that a little bit. A curse word over here, y'all, for those paying attention, some of you listening. A curse word, also known as a swear word, profanity or obscenity, is a word or phrase that is considered offensive, disrespectful, or vulgar in a particular culture or society. So, therefore, who has defined what curse words is according to the society? Who told you that B is, is, is in the sense of how it's used in today's language? We, we know it's used that way today, but what about in the Bible? Is B in the Bible? Yes, it is. <laughs> is nigga in the Bible? Yes, it is. Is ho in the Bible? Ho is directly in the Bible, it's just not under the term ho, it's under the term something else. Some of you already know. But why? Because God is trying to make a point to you. Not for you to go around and, 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 and say, hey, yes, it is. It's like, no, that's what they are. They are bees. They are niggas in the, in the, in the, in the content we're speaking about in a bad term. They are hoes. This is what they are. Don't be that. These words often carry strong emotional or taboo connotations and are typically avoided in formal or polite conversation because it's not meant to be it's not meant to be polite or formal it's meant to make a point that's why we say it so therefore is dealing with what if we're talking about something that's dealing with the emotions or so, we're, just, we're talking about dealing with something dealing with uh something deep within right then with the spirit and the soul therefore it's more so the 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 motive behind it and you know, if I say a certain word, there's a motive behind it to make a point. Like I said, don't say what I say. Listen to what I'm saying. The use of curse words can vary greatly depending on cultural norms, social settings, and personal preferences. You already know, everybody knows, everybody knows a white person cannot go into the hood and just talk, say nigga this and nigga that nigga this. They're not going to make it out. Everybody knows that. Unless they got a, they got the green light, which is rare to say it because they are a part of the community, a part of the culture. Cause probably they grew up and everybody knows them. So they know that when they say that word, they're not saying it how somebody else would say it. That's an outsider. Come on now, this real church right here, this real church, I would get in the pulpit in a, in a so-called church building and preach this same message and make you uncomfortable because you should be. So we got that. Let's, let's go over here. I made this post. Did God Almighty call your mama, your mama a hoe? Of course he did. I'm going to show it to you in the scriptures. The issue isn't if God called your mama a hoe. The issue is that your mama was a hoe, is a hoe, and might always be a hoe. Why? Because she won't come to repentance. The issue is, if I say something like this, people are quick to try, quote unquote, and jump down my throat about what type of past I am and how dare I say such things. They desire to hear the oracles of God until it is something they don't want to hear. I know y'all are wondering where is that in the Bible? The issue is you question the delivery of the message more than you question why I had to deliver the message the way I did. They are more stuck on me saying ho, nigga, or whatever I may say, than they are with why would I say something like that. And I sit here and tell you that if I say something, I say it with intent, purpose, and with not a lick of ignorance. They don't care about that. You said it. You said it. You said it. And then they be the main ones that be cussing. 
cussing up a cussing up a storm behind closed doors or in their heart. They say worse stuff than what I say. And don't think nobody knows. Come on, man. This is a scripture, but draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore, the seed of the whore. What is a whore? Are we stupid? What is a whore? A whore is a hoe. Matter of fact, it's in the word. Drop the W, the R and the E, you have hoe, because it's actually... We say H-O-E, but it's H-O with a little apostrophe, ho. Interesting, because Santa Claus says ho, ho, ho. And it's, what is Santa Claus? Santa Claus is Satan, and he is a whore. He is a ho. <laughs> oh, I don't think they're ready, Lord. I don't think they're ready. The context was speaking about spiritual hoeing, yet God equated the spiritual hoeing that Israel was doing with physical hoeing. That means that even if the people at the time were conceived in wedlock, the Most High was calling the father a hoe and the mother a hoe because of this spiritual hoeing and possibly physical hoeing. He cannot say they were the seed of the hoe and not be calling the mother and father hoes. If he's saying that they are the seed of, of, a, of the whore, well, woman doesn't have seed. It's the man. So he's saying that the man is a hoe. He's saying your father's a hoe and your mother, are, your mother's a hoe because they are ho hoeing after, whoring after other gods. It didn't matter if the child was conceived in, in a wedlock because it's, because the, the father and the mother were hoeing around. Then most likely what the children going to do, they're going to hoe around and worship other gods and then they're going to physically do it by hoeing around with other strange gods and peoples and stuff like that. So when I said your mama is a hoe, it is because God called her, excuse me, God called her a hoe first and really, really, really wants to get your attention. I believe calling anybody's mother a hoe will get their attention. And even though I broke this down to you and showed you directly in the scripture, you are more concerned with me saying hoe than the message and why I said it. A hoe, you see it's spelled both ways, is a female prostitute guess what a whore is you're smart aren't you same word same meaning sit in a different way in 2023 a whore is a hoe which is a female or you know in general we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it generic because i gotta do some other stuff um is a prostitute now it said profanity it said you know what i'm saying Cuss word, curse word is profanity, right? Okay, what is profanity? It says, um, is the quality of being profane, profane language or conduct. Okay. It says, see profane. Then it extended, extended sense, extended sense of foul language from the Old Testament commandment against profaning the name of the Lord. Did I profane the name of the Lord? No. I call people for what they were. If they are a hoe, then they're a hoe. If they are children of the devil, and they're children of the devil because hoes are children of the devil. Because Satan was the original whore. Uh oh. I think we, I think we're getting somewhere, right? I think we're getting the point. The point ain't just about, um, I got the freedom to say these words. The point is to have the understanding of these words and I can use them to get your attention to come to repentance and believe in the gospel. I become all things until all men hoping to save, say something. But you cannot become all things unto all men if you don't lack the wisdom of men. The understanding of men and women, which first and foremost comes through understanding yourself, which first and foremost comes through understanding God who made man in his image. You first had to come to repentance and understanding the vileness and the filthiness and the profaneness and the unholiness of yourself to then help others get out the vileness, the profaneness, the unholiness of themselves. Come on now, we preaching today. Therefore, when you have that knowledge, that wisdom and understanding, you can meet the people where they're at and use these words to draw the people out. Not so you, because you have the freedom just to say it. 
is to get their attention. But most people are not at that level. It ain't about, like I just told you, it ain't about for you to go around, go around saying it. It's for you to walk in the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, and ultimately the love that God has given you to be fishers of men. But maybe you yourself have not been fished, which is why you can't be fishers of men. So it was used in regards to what profaning the name of the Lord. I'm not profaning the name of the Lord. I know exactly what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. Everything I do is strategic. Now it says, see the word profane. Okay. Okay. Let's see, go down. Unecclesiastical, secular, not devoted to sacred purposes. A person could make the argument and say, what I'm doing is not church like. It's what you're saying is secular. Okay. Did you know there are people that are secular that are quoted in the Bible? Matter of fact, Satan himself is quoted in the Bible. The Apostle Paul quoted secular, uh, 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 I think it was poets, and they are mentioned in the Bible. All wisdom comes from God. <laughs> And what I'm saying, is it profane? It's profane to the profane. The ones who don't want to be exposed. But I'm using it in a sacred purpose to do what? To draw people to the gospel. Not so I can just sit here and freely say these words. I'm not going to do that. That serves no purpose. That's not edifying, is it? But if I break it down to you the way I break it down to you, then it's edifying. Because I'm going to show you that the ones who are claiming cuss word and curse word they are the ones that are actually who are cursed cursed word cursed seed seed of the serpent deceiving you unholy not sacred not consecrated everything i speak is holy it's con it's consecrated it's sacred why because i know the intent of why i'm saying what i say remember we're fighting a war a person is not initiated. Uh oh, I mean, I've been initiated into the, the secret mysteries, <laughs> which is the gospel, y'all. What does it say? Ignorant, unlearned. I'm not ignorant of what I'm saying. I'm not unlearned of what I'm saying. The Bible speaks about the unlearned, the profane people. Also, wicked, impious. I'm not being wicked. You see that? That's why you get all the context of Because the person just said, see, ecclesiastical, secular. Get them, get them, get them, get them. Uh. When they be the main ones that are devils, be doing worse than what they claim I'm doing. <laughs> then it says, uh, profano, literally out in front of the temple. Interesting. Not admitted into the temple. I've been admitted into the temple through the gospel. Where do you think I get this wisdom from? Well, we got that. Let's jump over here and look at a few scriptures that speak about profane. Judah hath dealt treacherously. Treacherously deals with something with the devil, right? Judah was acting like the devil. And an abomination is committed in Israel. Judah was doing what the devil was doing because the word speaks about the Antichrist and his coming abomination of what? Desolation. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. And in Jerusalem, for Judah hath profaned what? The holiness of the Lord which he loved and hath what? Married the daughter of a strange God. That's the context. Not the context you're trying to make it. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple, look at that word again, temple, we just saw that profane the Sabbath and are blameless. You can go read the context of that. Who also have gone about to profane the temple whom we took and would have judged according to our law. You can go read the context of it. But you see 
a recurring theme, right? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy. Can you prove I'm unholy? Maybe you can. And what? Profane. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for mass slayers. Hmm. But what I'm saying is profane because they see it as profane. Yet everything else is not profane to them. Being lawless is not profane to them. Because I don't promote lawlessness. Being disobedient is not profane to them. I don't pro promote disobedience. Being ungodly is not profane to them. I don't promote ungodliness. Being sinners is not profane to them. I don't promote you going out here sinning. Being unholy is not profane to them. I don't promote unholiness. Being profane is not profane to them. I don't pro promote profaneness. Being murders of fathers and murders of mothers and manslayers and everything else that, you know, I think it says that, uh, that, um, it goes against commandment is not profane to them. Even though I promote none of that stuff. Yeah, if I say ho ass nigga, that's profane to them. But sleeping with their neighbor's wife, robbing, stealing, killing, destroying all these different things is not profane to them. Do you see the ludicrousness of that? Do you see the hypocrisy of that? Do you see the foolishness of that? Ho ass nigga is profane. But you just slept with somebody sleeping with multiple people and destroying people's lives, lying, all these different things isn't profane. But refuse profane and old wise fables what did i give you a wise fable at i didn't and exile thyself rather unto godliness okay a person can make an argument and say still what you're saying is profane you can take it as profane but it, did it edify you did you get the point did somebody get the point with what i'm making do you think that somebody's gonna be like man that really got my attention it gonna got me got me thinking this message is gonna read some read somebody Two, three, four, five years from now. You know why? Because it's happened over and over and over and over and over again. Where messages I have done. Hey man, I watched your video from five years ago. You said this and it stuck with me five years later. What I say? Oh, you know that video? I don't, I don't remember the video idea they talking about, but they do. And that's what's important. They remember. They remember. Man, you know that message? I, I hate it when you said that. But you know what? I, you know, I stopped listening to you. I came back to it because it came back to me. That word was so powerful. And it helped me through life. It helped me to see that, you know what? That brother really loved me. I didn't want to listen to what you had to say right then. I hated what you said. I hated you. I despise your ministry. But it came back full circle and I seen that you really loved me. Which is why you said what you said. People tell me this all the time. All the time people tell me this. A message you did years ago. I, I, I didn't, couldn't stand the way you said it. But I understand now why you said, why you said, and why you said it the way that you said it. You had to because I wasn't receiving it right then. I wasn't, I wasn't receiving it. But the seed was planted. And the people that listen to this video right now that had had that happen, they say, yep, that's me. I, I know why he's saying that because I was that same person. I would not have received it any other way. He came with power. He came with authority. He got my attention. Even if I didn't receive it, he still got my attention. And now I understand. You know what they tell me? Keep doing your thing, brother. Cause you help me, you help bring me to salvation. So when you come to me and try to tell me that I ain't doing my job, where I'm doing my job is wrong. I got a, we're going to, we're going to say a hundred, we're going to keep it light. I got a hundred people that says otherwise. We talking about, we just talking about, oh, they're just saying it. We talking about people that, Hey, you know what? You inspire me to live better. 
in Christ. Now, what they do with it is what they do with it. But this came out of their own mouth. The message you said, the way you said it, it inspired me. Eventually, because I see that you really care to live better for Christ. I did not want to hear what you had to say right then. But now I receive it. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to, to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings. Am I vainly babbling? Am I doing this in vain? Because if I'm doing it in vain, I need to get paid. If y'all, we're going to do, do like this. If you think what I'm preaching is in vain, then go ahead and send me your money because I need to get paid. Because preaching don't pay too well, at least not around these parts. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't need to be working then. I need to be doing, I'm, if I'm doing this in vain, vain babblings, then common sense would tell me I need to get paid for what I'm doing. I need to get paid for what I'm doing because I'm here to purposely deceive the people. Let's go ahead and skip all that. Go ahead and send me your money for my vain babblings. Send me your money right now. Oh, you're not going to do that. You see what I'm saying? Like, do we see the foolishness of this? Like, wh why would I be doing this and not getting paid for it if I'm doing it in vain? That would be stupid. But, but, but if somebody can come along and deceive the people, and not be real with them, then they can get your money. But I'm not here for your money. I'm here for something greater. I'm here for your soul. I'm not here for your money. I'm here for something greater. I'm here for your soul. Because if I preached the way that others preach, then I would be paid. But I preach and I expose people's sins. I call them for what they are. If I say that you a whole ass nigga, then you a whole ass nigga and I mean it. If I say your mama is a hoe, your daddy is a hoe, then that's what they is. Does that make you want to open your pockets up and give me money? Does that make people want to open their pockets up and say, we finna pay this brother for what he just said? Like, come on, man. Come on. Shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Am I pointing you, if I'm saying these words, am I pointing you to ungodliness or am I pointing you to the gospel? Am I pointing you to repent? Am I saying with such passion, such authority, such emotions, such power to make a point? We don't have time for games. And if I got to call you the way I need to call you to get your attention so you can come to repentance, then so be it but I have not sinned. What sin have I committed? I just showed you it's in the Bible and I'm going to continue to show you. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. Look how he puts fornication with profane. Am I promoting fornication? Have I promoted fornication all the years of my ministry? No, I have not. In fact, I've told you the fornication that I used to commit, how I used to be a profane person. But if I say what I just said, uh, H-A-N, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, he said, oh my God. He said that. How dare he? He's a profane person. But that person that's promoting fornication they their best friend. They don't call them out. They don't see them as profane. But I'm profane because I said what I said. Even though I don't promote fornication. Huh. Yeah, we see how that goes. We see how that, we see how that goes. Let's jump over here. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cur cur cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Excuse me, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And unto, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. 
Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. See, the serpent was cursed. We became the curse because we received the same we received the same curse as the serpent. And then everything else ended up being cursed. The ground, which is what we walk on. So we cursed. The ground cursed. I mean that we cursed too. Because the serpent was cursed and we ate in disobedience. Mm. Cursed. Curse word. Cursed seed. And now art thou cursed from the earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. I think we're getting somewhere. Cursed seed. Y'all get so focused on other stuff that you're not really... And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. What is a curse? To wish evil to, to excommunicate. Oh, he said a curse word. He said a word. He said a. He said a word that was wishing evil upon some. Upon remember, word is seed, right? He said a word that was wishing evil upon somebody. He said a word that was excommunicating somebody. He was swearing profanely. I wasn't swearing profanely to God, was I? No. Use blasphemous or profane language. Profane according to who? If they are whole, they are whole. That's not profane. That's true. If they are a child of the devil, they are a child of the devil. If you go read the context of when Jesus was calling the children of the devil and really re get the context of it and the tone then you will understand why they were trying to kill him at that particular point in time. But no, you're reading it, you're reading it, you're reading it in passing. Yeah, Jesus called him children of the devil. You know, it just, you know, it was even just the way he said it. You, you, he children of the devil. <laughs> nah, he was saying the way I was saying it. Y'all some whole niggas. We're going to tone it, we're going to tone it down. I'm going to make my point. Um, so again, it says to wish evil to, to excommunicate. And then it says from the source curse. So we're going to look at that. I think it's right here. Onward movement, motion forward, a running in a prescribed direction or over a prescribed distance. So curse, the root of curse is course. Hmm. Interesting. A running, a journey, direction, track, navigated by a ship, flow of a stream. It tells you from C U R S, curse, to run. So curse means run. It literally means run. Also, order, sequence, habitual or ordinary procedure. So you're talking about curse word, and it tells you what? Um, let me see where we at. To wish evil to, to excommunicate, you're telling them, go do what you do. Go run on, go run your course on the hill. Cause you're already cursed. You're not pronouncing a curse upon somebody. That person's already cursed. When the witches and everything and the warlocks, they do these curses or they put a curse on trying to remove curses. They're not removing curses. They're only, they're only bringing forth more and more what's already within a person, which is cursing. dealing with the flesh so why they don't tell you that why don't tell you that the root of curse is coarse and the root of course is to run that's why we run our course why because we're running from the curse that we are we are blessed and we are cursed how can we be blessed and cursed because your flesh is cursed you run from the flesh you run from the works the flesh you run your course running from your curse and where you can defeat the curses through christ his gospel who became the curse for us 
because curse is everyone that hangeth from a tree or on a tree. They don't tell you all this. They don't break it down to you like this. I wonder why. Now, we go back up here. It says, as a noun, a prayer that evil or harm befall one. Consignment of a person to an evil fate. And it tells you right here. It says, course, see course. That's what we just looked at. We just looked at that. Like I just told you. Why they don't tell you all this. I told you I got the wisdom so I can speak it. Don't say what I say. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying what I'm saying for a reason so you can understand. Not so you can say these words. I understand these words. I understand why they're used the way that they're used. <clears throat> it also says the evil, meaning the evil which has been invoked upon one, that which causes severe trouble. Okay. Jump over here. Are there curses pronounced on people specifically in the Bible? Well, you tell me. Because y'all said that some of you are saying I'm wrong for saying what I said. I'm not going to say it again. I, I didn't say it enough. Some of you are saying I'm wrong for what I what I said. But I can show you pretty much the same thing in, in the in the Bible. I've already showed you, but let me show you worse. Let them be ashamed. This is David. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. So they wishing me evil. Guess what? I wish them evil. Oh, you're not supposed to do that. Right? You're not supposed to do that. There's a time and a place for everything. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, aha, aha. Are they mocking? Okay. Yo, we got something for you. This is the prayer he's praying to God. He's praying to God, let them be desolate. Okay. L little light work. Let's, let's get a little bit deeper with it. Pour out thine indignation upon them and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. Destroy them all. Sound pretty cursed to me. This is, this is another prayer. He's praying to God. Huh. Let's see if we can find something a little bit more heavy, a little more deep. Hold not thy peace, O God, of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They are spoken against me with a lying tongue. So his actions are justified. His actions are justified. His prayer is justified. They compass me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. This is, this is, this, this is a prayer. He gave them love and they became his enemies. He prayed for them and said, Lord, Lord, I, I just want to be cool with these my people. They ain't trying to hear that. Okay, I got something for them. Because he got to defend the throne. He has to defend the kingdom. He had to defend the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. He just couldn't let it. Let him keep on getting a free pass. And they have rewarded me evil for good. And hatred for my love. Look, look what he says. Set thou a wicked man over him. And let Satan stand at his right hand. Uh oh. We finna turn up. Y'all thought we was turned up before. Now we this turned up right here. This is scriptures. This is this is scriptures. This is turning up right here. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Oh, but if I say I ain't gonna say it no more, I said I wasn't gonna say it no more. God said it enough. But if I said that, oh no, he's saying curse words. What is this right here? But it's justified and it's righteous to make a point. Let his days be few. Let the nigga die. That's what he just said. 
and let another take his office. Let him die and let somebody else get his wife, his children, whatever. Let his children die. Because in other places he said that too. Oh, let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabond. So he didn't adjust, he just didn't address his enemy. He addressed his children, his children's children, his children's children, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Good Lord. But y'all mad about what I said. Because I said it in the way that that's plain speech. Yet my words don't contradict what King David said, who, by the way, had a heart, has a heart after the heart of God. And guess what? This right here is scripture. This Bible. In context. <laughs> Let's, let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. He said, let, him, let his children beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath and let the strangers spoil his labor. Let them, let them, let them, let them, let them have nothing. Take everything from him. Take everything from his children. Take everything from his children's children. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Good Lord. Oh my God. But y'all mad because I said H A N. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Neither let there be any favor to his fatherless children. Good Lord. They really pissed him off, didn't they? All this cursing he doing. If, <laughs> if you don't see that, I don't know what to tell you. And this is the Psalms. This is a song right here. He put it in the song. All, you, all we need is a beat. Let his posterity be cut off. And in a generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. Don't blot their sins out. Remember them so you can destroy their wicked asses. And let not the sin of his mother. Good. Woo. Woo. Oh, good. Good Lord. He didn't just say the children. He didn't just say the dude, the people. He didn't just say their children's children. He didn't say the father. He said, let his mother. He went for his mother. Now, you know, you go for somebody's mother. They'd be ready to fight. He said, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out because his mama was a hoe. So let his mama, her hoe and ways not be blotted out before the Lord. Let the Lord see her for what she is and what she still is a hoe. Let them be before the Lord continually that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth because that he remembered not to show mercy. They didn't show mercy to me when I loved them. Now they got to deal with this. Y'all don't want to listen when I was preaching politely. Y'all don't want to listen when I was, when I was preaching softly. Y'all don't want to listen when I didn't raise my voice. Now you got to deal with this. The time is short. It's too short. Because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. He not only took advantage of the king, he took advantage of the ones that didn't even have nothing. And you don't think that we're supposed to be upset at that? Hmm. You're telling yourself. You're telling yourself when you come at me and you come at my brothers and sisters more, you come at more, us more than the ones who are taking advantage of the poor and the needy. I don't take advantage of the poor and the needy. I give to the poor and the needy. I don't rob. I'm not robbing. I don't rob from the, from the rich and give to the poor. I take, I take by force with the power of God, what is rightfully ours and give it to the poor and needy. That's what I do. As he loved cursing, See, they love cursing, but they say, no, you're cursing. They love cursing because they are cursed. There's power in it. So let it come unto him. So they love cursing. Let the cursing come upon them. As he, as he delighted, not in blessings. See, I'm giving you a blessing because I don't have to break this down to you. I can keep this to myself. 
I can charge you for it. Come to my school. I sit here in this office and do this for free. My wife sacrifices much also for me to be, to, to be able to do what I'm doing. Y'all have a problem with that. But if I was doing it and getting some money from it, you wouldn't you would have a problem. Because then I would be feeding until you feed in my pockets. <laughs> I told you, we expose people right here, even myself. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garment. I don't clothe myself with cursing. I use it to prove a point. And then, you know, y'all think I'd be cussing or cursing, but not in the way that you are saying it. So let it come into his bowels like water. Good Lord, he going in. And like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him. And for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be the reward of my adversaries from the Lord. And of them that speak evil against my soul. But do thou for me, O God, the Lord. For thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like the shadow when it declineth. I am tossed up and down as the locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. I became also a reproach unto them. When they looked upon me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, and save me according to, my, to thy mercy. This is my prayer also. I pray this, but I pray, uh, Lord, I need mercy. I need, I need, I need your mercy. I'm striving to do right. I'm striving to be a blessing and pull people that are cursed out of their curse. That they may know that this is thy hand, that thou, Lord, has done it. Let them curse, but bless thou. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. Let my adversary be clothed with shame and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him among the multitude. I don't profane the name of the Lord. I tell you the people that are profane and what they are so you can see them for what they are. For he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a two more and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel, Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites of Moab, the Hagarenes, and the Hagarenes, Gabal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre. Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites. Do what? Kill them. Destroy them. As unto the Midianites. This is a prayer. As to Sisera. As to Jabin at the, at the brook of Kisan. Kisan. Which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb. And like Zeb, yea, all the princes as Zeba and Zamuna, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Oh my God, make them like a wheel and, excuse me, as a stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as a flame, excuse me, and as the flame sets of the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Good Lord. Oh no, we shouldn't say things like that. That's ungodly. That Christ, that's not Christ-like. Stop it. Stop the cap, man. Stop the cap. There's a time and place for everything. You can't curse somebody that's already cursed. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you can give them a double curse, but they still cursed. Okay, you curse somebody that's already cursed. And you curse somebody again that's already cursed. That's triple cursing. So you take away the curse, 
you take away the double curse and you put upon it because you cursed them two times, right? They still got the curse. They still cursed. And the only way they can come from come from under that original curse is through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't say what I say. Listen to what I'm saying. Now, let's get a little bit more of this. Let's close this out. Then we got the point. With that, uh, we can close that out. What does anathema maranatha mean? It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Why these two words, one Greek and the other Syriac, were not translated is not obvious. They are the words which, with which the Jews began their greater excommunication, cursing, whereby they not only excluded sinners from their society, but delivered them up to the divine judgment, that is, to misery, misery in this life and perdition in the life to come. So, in the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 16, 22, it says, If any man love, love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Let him be cursed in this life, and let him be cursed in life to come. And then also, maranatha signifies the Lord cometh, or will come, that is to take vengeance. So, you put it together, the Lord is coming, the Lord will come, the Lord is coming to take vengeance, and you will be cursed, because you rejected him in this life. You will continue to be cursed in this life, but also, you will continue or you will be cursed in the life to come. Anathema, maranatha. Oh no, but we're not supposed to say something like that, but it says, <laughs> you are excommunicating them. That's what it means. Anathema, maranatha. Excommunicating somebody. And guess what? It's more so a term that's, deal, that's dealing with somebody that professes to be a believer because it's a church term. It's a church term. <clears throat> holding faith in a good conscience which some after excuse me which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck of whom Hymenius and Alexander whom what whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme being delivered over to Satan don't sound like a good thing it's like a curse to me it's like a curse word. <laughs> but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. You want to be chastened of the Lord. You want to be chastened of his people. So you're not condemned with the world. You see, people are listening to this message and they're taking this message as a message of hate. When this message is a message of love, because if I didn't love you, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't say what I said. It got your attention, didn't it? Now come on to repentance. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. This is what it's about. It's not about the freedom to say these words. It's about understanding those words to lead people to salvation. If I'm saying it, I'm saying it because that's how God sees you. If God sees you as that, then what is he going to do with you? Because you refuse to reject the message when I met you where you was at. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that have done this deed might be taken away from among you. Hmm. Might be taken away from among you. For verily, as absent in the body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that have so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan, for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Meaning that, hey, 
If they ain't saved, then guess what? That's on them. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the past, keep, keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Y'all, excuse me, I've been preaching for a while. You see, um, well, you will see, I've recorded several sermons in one day. I wrote unto you in an epist in an epist in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or with extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye need to go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunker, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. But what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourself that wicked person. Now we'll continue in chapter 6. Did any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? To judge you have to have wisdom. You have to understand stuff. You have to understand why is this, that, and why is that, that. What does this mean? What does that mean? Just like court. You go to court, you have to, the lawyers have to understand the terms, the, the verbiage, the language. Because the defendant is, and his lawyer is going to say, no, that's not what we meant. That's not what it says. So we understand so we can expose the hypocrisy and hopefully bring them to salvation if they choose. Showing them, showing them that they are guilty and they're greater than the one they serve is here. They serve the devil. We serve Christ. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, Set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. So we got that. I'm not gonna, I don't think I got to read all of it. But let's go down here. Uh, let me see. Uh... Let's, let's go ahead and jump over here and we get ready to close it out. So I can, you know, show you. Whore is in the Bible. The way we say it in 2023 is, ho. Is it any less, is the intent and what it means any, any less? If I say, man, she a hoe. In comparison to say, man, she's a whore. In this day and age, whore would have I would say whore, whore would be more more strong word because the way that people take it, but it means the same thing. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore or hoe, she profane her father. She shall be burnt with fire not a game burnt with fire we ain't burning people with fire right now but guess what we is the word of God if they don't repent what's going to happen to them they're going to the pits of hell then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she died because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore or hoe in her father's house so shalt thou put evil away from among you. Now we know the context of this right here. Christ mentioned this scripture. Um, they brought the woman, but they didn't bring the man. If um, one was doing it, doing adultery, both of them were supposed to be brought forth. The one was playing the hoe, 
The, if the woman was playing the hoe, she didn't sleep by herself. The man was supposed to be brought forth also. There shall be no whore for the daughter, excuse me, there shall be no whore of the daughters of, of Israel, that says Zion, but you know, <laughs> nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both of these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. He said a hoe is an abomination. So a H A N is definitely a abomination. Now I want to make sure I break this down for you right here. Because there's some deep stuff being said. Some of you know, a lot of you don't. He references whore, which is a hoe, which is also a prostitute, right? But he mentions the price of a dog. What's a dog? A dog in the context of it, it can be a sodomite. But a dog in the context of the scripture is the male variant of a whore, prostitute. A male prostitute. So, what is a female dog called? Exactly. And what does she do? What does it say? That bee is in heat. All she want to do is do the thing. You see what I'm saying? You see the connection? A bee is a hoe. A hoe is a prostitute. A prostitute is a whore. Just like get the dog. Jesus called people dogs. What was he calling them? He was calling them what we call the variant for female, a bee. Sodomites, dogs. And even, even if they weren't literally sodomites, if they were whoring themselves with other gods, God still sees them, saw them, sees them as whores, as dogs, as a bee. God called people bees. And you know what the word is. And it was worse for it, the men to be called that because it's a man being called a, a bee. You see what I'm saying? For a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. I mean, the language is pretty straightforward. But, um, yeah, like I told you, it's in there. You just, you have to see it. You have to understand the language and how they use these words back then. Now, the crazy thing is people, people quote the scripture all the time. If, if I say B, if I say whore, if I say, well, I say, if I say B, I say ho, I say nigga, right? The same people will say that's wrong, but the same people will quote and say there's nothing new under the sun. If there's nothing new under the sun, that means that B would and could be found historically going all the way back to this time period. So therefore, we have to understand what word was used or how was it used to describe what we know as a B. Because remember, y'all just said it. Don't condemn yourself. There's nothing new under the sun. So if we say B today, then what did they say back then? They said this. It's the same word, same meaning. I just broke it down to you. We're not walking around saying it because we want to freely say it. We're walking around to prove a point. Because God already told you, thou shalt not bring the hire of a bee or the price of a dog or you know a male bee into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both of, both these are abominations to the Lord. Don't bring them there. Don't bring them around. Don't bring them in. Apostle Paul told you that. Stay away from them. Because you're going to end up being the same thing. And a woman will tell you she can't stand no B-A nigga. 
not H A nigga. She will tell you. Women say this. They cannot stand no B A nigga. Women despise a B A nigga. I'm not gonna say it, cause I've said it without saying it. Why is that? Cause he walking around like he ain't got no balls. He not walking around like a man, which the, it's in us, man. It's in us. Women know this. Women want men to be men. They don't want them to be, you know what. But the women have also figured out there's power in it. So they weaponize the sodomites to come against the strong, godly men. We have unpacked a lot. Some of you may need to watch this two times. Watch this many times you need to. With that being said, God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated, it is declared.